what do you think, Neil? How did I do? Can I be in your next concert? Oh, wait. This isn't a Neil Young audition? Oh, well, what is this then? Oh, hi, Sophia. Oh, it's the You Spoke We Listen. The you, oh, hey, 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 everybody out there in Infotex land. Uh, yeah, I wanted to talk to you again about how when you speak, we listen. Yeah, I don't know if you remember, but earlier this year, we did a You Spoke, We Listened uh, short movie in front of our movies that kind of went over, you know, several suggestions that we had gathered from our customers and webinar attendees over the year of 2019. Um, and here we are already. Um, well, I mean, this is just kind of the strength that numbers that we got. And this just kind of proves the you know, the old adage that uh, if you show people you're willing to listen to them, they'll speak more. And so we already have, uh, you know, what, five new ideas coming in. And uh, so, A, um, we've got a lot of kudos from our clients on the shorts. They want us to keep the shorts coming. Uh, we're actually starting to, you know, realize that, um, you know, maybe we should make all our movies, you know, short, you know, 20 to 30 minute movies. Um and then yet the one movie we did this year that was, you know, longer than 20, 30 minutes, it was an hour, was a movie followed by a panel discussion. And it uh, seems like everybody liked that panel discussion as well. Um, we are getting, you know, uh, uh, input saying, hey, you know, talk to us more about what you do for us. And so uh, we have updated our what to expect in an incident response test as well as our what to expect in a um, in an audit uh, for our incident response testing clients and our audit clients. But that brings us to our third bullet point, which is we want more technical stuff for technical clients. And, uh, you know, I'm already working on twisting a few arms to get that taken care of. But uh, that actually came out of our uh, movie, What the Cat Seems to Be, which is the one webinar we had that had a lot of technical people, a lot more technical people came to that webinar than we're used to seeing. So, A, thank you, technical people, for pulling um, your technical self away from all of those technical problems that you get to technically solve. Um, and uh, we love it, and we'll definitely be working on that. The one that is truly my fault, we've had a debate about it for a long time, but I don't know if you... Uh, remember, but we always used to, you know, have kind of a two-minute warning, and we'd start our webinars two minutes late. Uh, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to start them on time. Uh, the person that came in with that complaint was correct. I mean, we're punishing the people that show up on time uh, for the sake of those who don't, and it's not like our movies start out with a lot of content anyway, so we're going to go ahead and start on time. Um, this last one, um, out of the hundreds and hundreds of ideas we got, um, a half of one came in or, you know, one idea came in saying, hey, love Dan on the harmonica, I'd like to see more of that. And you actually already did in the introduction to this You Spoke, We Listen. So um, if you give us feedback, uh, we want to get right on it. Uh, we're already doing number one here. Uh, we're already working on number two. Uh, we're, we're twisting some arms. This is the heavy lift for us, but we'll, you'll see some technical stuff coming out soon. Uh, we're definitely going to start everything on time, and uh, you've already seen me play a different song on the harmonica. So thank you very much uh, for joining us today, and, and thank you for the feedback. Our lawyers want you to know that when you attend any of our webinars or watch any of our movies, you're agreeing to the terms of service located at the link on the screen. We're also required to provide this abbreviation of what our terms of service include. The main point we need to get across is that regulations change on a regular basis, and we want you to know that what we present can sometimes be very time-dated information or our own interpretation of new guidance or regulations. The materials we present today are subject to change. Also, whenever we provide free boilerplates as part of our webinars or movies, we're required to point out our transfer of copyright agreement, which is also located on our website, in our IT resources library. You can read it by going to the link on the screen. Please also note, by attending an Infotex webinar or by receiving any Infotex movie, you may be added to our mailing list. We apologize if you'd rather not receive notice of other free education. You can always opt out at the link on the screen.
Well, hello there. Thanks for joining us for the movie Incident Response Test, What to Expect. And this is the 2020 version. It replaces the 2017 version. Um, if you look at the you know, screen there, you'll notice this is self-moderated. I don't have anybody introducing me. If you've seen my, our movies on movies.infotext.com, you'll see we you know, have a, a big to-do over you know, introducing the moderator and everything. Um, but I do want to make sure you know that Adam Reynolds, Sophia Tafoya, and Brian Bennell have been very instrumental in putting together this movie. But before we get into the details of what you should expect if you've been engaged with Infotex, to conduct an incident response test. And really what we're doing is we're facilitating a tabletop test for you. But before we go into those details, I just wanna kinda of start at a high level and, 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 and establish that what you really should be expecting from the incident response tabletop tests is value. Um, you, we should be putting everybody on the same page about your incident response process. We, we want to plug into your organization as a partner when it comes to risk response. And, and, and if your management team isn't walking out of the incident response test feeling like it was worth the time, then you should talk to us about it because we might not have achieved the value that you should expect from this process. And so what we want to talk about is A, why are you involved in something cyber like an incident response test in the first place? Um, if you're an HR person, if you're an executive of the bank or the credit union, um, if you're uh, the marketing person, you might be thinking, this is cybersecurity, why am I involved? Well, we'll answer that question. Um, then we're gonna talk about the process itself, and then we're gonna dig into what your role is in the process. And so, uh, how about we get started with that? So, why are you involved in an incident response test? And, and really, let's kind of back away a little bit and just talk about why we're doing tabletop tests of our incident response programs in the first place, okay? Starting with the fact that in 2015, the FFIEC released what we call the Cybersecurity Assessment Tool, and you might recognize some of this iconography. I know your ISO, ISO has had to present it way too many times, but part of that guidance requires us to exercise our incident response plan. Uh, meanwhile, in 2016, uh, the FFIEC updated their Information Security Booklet which suggests the use of FSISAC CAPS tests, uh, which are tests of your payment system. And you might have already participated in them. This is not that type of a test. This, this is, is um, a test of your internal systems. This is a test of your incident response team. This test really requires management and not IT to conduct the tests. And, and by the way, the information security booklet says those exact words. It says management should conduct periodic, I think it might even say annual, tabletop tests of the incident response plan. Um, and so what I've established here is that you're required by guidance to test your plan. But what I have not yet established is why do we have the marketing and the HR and the executives and the people that have nothing to do with cybersecurity testing the plan? Well, you know, first of all, let me just kind of establish that it's not really the best reason. Compliance, at least in cybersecurity, is never really the best reason to do something. But what I'm here to tell you is we have learned that those organizations who have proactively exercised how they're gonna act when they're in that panic, when, when they're thinking they have to notify their customers or, or heaven forbid, when they're worried they're gonna have to pay a ransom, those organizations that do that well can turn lemons to lemonade. They've actually got, we've been doing this since the year 2000, and I've heard again and again and again and again and again from banks saying, holy cow, we've got customers coming into branch giving us kudos from the way we responded to that scary career threatening, and I'm putting quotes around that, event. Equifax proved that if we don't respond to an incident properly, we destroy our reputation. 
what this test should prove to you is that management does need to be involved when there's a cybersecurity incident if we have to notify our customers. You marketing people, I'm pretty sure, want to be involved when we're going to notify our customers, right? And then meanwhile, if we're going to have to investigate our employees, if, if we're going to be talking to our employees about not following policies or whatever, pretty sure we want HR involved in that. And then finally, I think the executives are already starting to realize why their involvement is important because I'm pretty sure you're not going to approve a letter going out to all of our customers saying we just goofed up if you haven't been properly trained on how that process works. We have found that if your information security officer or whoever it is that chairs your incident response team can walk you through a process that you recognize as it unfolds, that's when we're turning lemons to lemonade. That's when we have people coming into the branch giving us kudos, even though we just screwed up. And finally, what we're also seeing is that there's a lot of times when even though customer information was involved, we do not have to notify our customers. And so what's great about the incident response test process that we walk you through is it gives you the confidence you need when you run across those incidents. Because you're saying, hey, when we tested this, BAM was there and we didn't have to notify our customers then, maybe we don't have to notify them now. And so we'll exercise that type of a scenario as well so that you fully understand when you do not have to notify your customers. So hey, I hope I made the case as to why. Let's kind of dive into the process itself. Okay, and so the incident response process, by the way, is what we want to make sure you realize is we're talking about confidentiality here, not availability. And so, you know, ransomware actually does affect availability, right? And so we do want you involved in ransomware, and we see ransomware as a cyber threat. We see it as something that the incident response team would address. But a tornado taking out your data center, uh, a hurricane wiping out your vendor. Uh, those are availability incidents that are not really cyber incidents. They don't affect confidentiality and they don't affect the, the availability of our network when it should be running. And so those are tested in a different tabletop test called the business continuity tabletop test. What we're talking about with this test is a test of your incident response plan that's different than your business continuity program. We have many different ways to test programs and plans and that sort of thing. Um, and what we're really talking about here for this engagement is a tabletop test of your incident response plan that requires a test plan, minutes of the test, and post-mortem reviews. Um, you also can get a functional test of your incident response plan by asking and working with whoever is auditing you, whoever's conducting those pretext calls or those phishing tests or whatever, to work with you to measure how long it takes uh, to broadcast awareness. And uh, if you're an audit client of Infotex, be sure to bring that up. We'd be happy to work with you on that. And that's really kind of a functional test. It's a test of your overall incident response program, or at least the broadcast awareness component of it. So the process itself then, um, starts with a kickoff meeting. Um, from there, then there's a training meeting. Um, then there's the actual test itself. And then the post-incident review or the post-mortem review is what I've always called it. Uh, New Guidance calls it a post-incident review. And what I want you to know is this fine print here. Um, this is what your information security officer has to make sure is done. Uh, we're not going to go into all those details here, but suffice it to say, along each step of the way, there's a lot of work being done in the background. Just know that your ISO is you know, hard at work, uh, setting up things, approving things, that sort of thing to make sure that this test goes smoothly. And then meanwhile, in between each of these processes and then actually after the postmortem review, uh, there's a lot of work that Infotex is doing as well. The test itself, according to guidance, requires a test plan, it requires minutes of the test, 
and then it requires a post-mortem re or a post-incident review. And we're going to be helping you with all of that, which really is kind of bringing me to what your role is. What is your role in the test then? Well, first of all, before we even get to your role, there's a lot of advanced preparation, kind of the details of what I was showing you in that, you know, that process diagram is, uh, we're actually gonna um, have your ISO send us your incident response program. You know, we're gonna review the policy, we're gonna review the plan, review the tools, we're gonna make recommendations, and then you might be involved, in, you know, as an incident response team member, um, and in terms of receiving those recommendations, deciding whether you wanna act upon them, maybe updating your incident response program before we even get to the first part of the test that's your role. And, and so that's all being done in the background with the exception of you might have to read the you know, new incident response plan. Uh, but these items that are in red here, this is really where you're going to have work to do. Uh, first of all, you're going to need to sit in a training meeting, which usually lasts about an hour. Sometimes they've gone to an hour and 15 minutes or so if there's been a lot of questions. Uh, but in that, we're going to, we have a nice little PowerPoint we're going to present that, you know, kind of is customized to your plan. We, you know, we can do that because we've already reviewed your plan, right? Um, and then what we're actually going to do is we're going to walk you through the plan. And what we actually do is we do that one page at a time. Uh, we just want to know, do you have any questions about this? Is there anything that needs to be updated in this? Um, we don't usually see people that are non-technical people suggesting updates until we get to the part of your plan where we're listing phone numbers and that sort of thing. That's where we usually find out that, oh, we spelled Susie's name wrong or, you know, so-and-so changed their cell number or whatever. And we want to make sure we get that done before the test day. And then finally, we're putting together a test plan that um, establishes what the test day is going to be comprised of. Um, then the next part of your role is to actually sit in that test and pretend like you're in the middle of an incident. Uh, we usually have between six and eight scenarios that we'll walk you through. Um, yes, that is a long meeting. Um, you're not reading that wrong. Uh, we want to start the meeting at 10. Uh, we want to have lunch right during the meeting. Um, we'll talk to you about some of the scenarios, maybe ask some questions or whatever during lunch. Um, we're going to, you know, uh, pick right up where we left off when it comes to uh, the test. And, and, and we usually close at about 2, 2.30, 3 o'clock-ish. Then, in a completely separate meeting, and by the way, the training meeting is on a different day than the test day, which is on a different day than the postmortem review. Uh, what we'll do is we put together a report that you actually own. It's your report. We go over that report with you. You know, one of the things we always worry about is people rush through the postmortem review process, both in the, you know, you know the, the actual incident response test, uh, but then also, you know, more concerning is, you know, in, in a real incident. And so... You know, one of my, you know, sayings that I use to try to encourage people to take the postmortem review process more seriously is that if hindsight is 2020 vision, you know, why not document what we're seeing, you know, so that the next time we do an incident response test, the next time we do a, uh, you know, next time we actually have a live incident, uh, we are able to do a better job. And so uh, with that, I, I want to go ahead and just kind of quickly show um, what the, the deliverables are from the incident response testing process. Now, you know, in order to protect the names of our clients and stuff, we don't have a lot of deliverables in here, but suffice it to say that the first step, again, we'll get your incident response program, we'll review it, we'll work with your information security officer to queue up possible changes to it that you then as an incident response team may or may not approve. Um, we also will do an insurance review if it is included in your engagement where we um, we take your, your cyber insurance policy, other insurance policies, and we fill out and populate a spreadsheet that ends up delivering a table to your incident response plan. Usually it's an appendix in the back of your plan uh, that will help you navigate the do's and don'ts and uh, what is included and what is not included of your cybersecurity insurance. Um, 
Of course, we already talked about the plan walkthrough meeting. That's, you know, and normally in this, there will be a PowerPoint presentation that's customized to you. And then, of course, there will be your incident response plan and then your, your test plan. And we, and we walk off that through the training meeting. Um, the test documentation then is just kind of a series of files. Um, you know, of course, we're going to have a test plan. Uh, we're going to do minutes of the test. Now, we actually will have handouts that we give to you during the test. Uh, that queue up each of the scenarios. Um, and then this, this is actually a subset of this. We actually take those handouts and then we take minutes on each of those scenarios. Um, and then finally, there's the postmortem review. Um, and then most of our clients are actually having us go in and present the results of your incident response test to your board of directors. It's not that expensive. We do it over the, the internet, so you don't have to pay to get us down there or anything. Uh, but suffice it to say, if we're doing that, um, it's really a, a summarizing the postmortem review uh, for your board of directors. And so uh, back to our presentation then, I just want to circle back around one more time to that postmortem review and try to help you know, establish how important that is. Because if we have to invest the time anyway, you know, why not get a return on an, in the investment? Or, or more importantly, in a real live incident, what we're actually investing is possibly some of our reputation. So if we're going to, you know, hurt our reputation a little better, you know, allow it to be hurt or not protected as much as we would like to, let's learn from that process. And uh, having said that, I, um, let me see here. I, I've already played the harmonica, haven't I? Uh, well, just in case. And after that, I guess I only have one last thing to say, and that is never forget, awareness is 9-11s of the battle. Be sure to check out our movie on how to test your seam located on movies.infotex.com.